Hey, hello and welcome back. I hope you're doing well and given the situation all around and around the globe, I hope you're safe, you're healthy and you are at home. So today I thought we'll talk something um, about the top five things, like really big five things that have been on my list for a while and I haven't been able to do much about it because I go back and forth on the train. So sometimes I'm great with it for a while and then, you know, poof, everything is gone. So, all right. So my first one is a pretty big one that, you know, in my entire life, I haven't been able to do. Um, that is waking up every morning at 6 a.m. Now, I know this is amazing because um, for some of you, it probably comes very naturally. You're like a morning person. But for someone like me, it's it really doesn't happen because I'm not a morning person by nature. I can stay up till 6 a.m. like they say, but I can't wake up at 6 a.m. Or that's what I thought till now. Things have changed like dramatically recently in the last one, one and a half weeks. That is the time I've started working at home, which means like everybody else around the globe, I have no commute, a lot less meetings unless absolutely required to do. No more office banters where, you know, someone just drops in while you're working and then you start reworking again. So I can completely look at the way I work and what I've been trying to do. And waking up at 6 a.m. has always been something that I looked up at people like, oh my God, like, how do you even wake up at 6 a.m.? And I will tell you exactly how. It is not luck. It is not forcing my myself to get out of bed, but it's just a list of things that I'm doing to ensure that I just normally naturally wake up at 6 a.m. I still have an alarm, but I think um, since I've been doing it for almost a week, a little more than a week now, I have started waking up around the same time even without the alarm now. Now, isn't that great news? So the way I've been waking up at 6 a.m., the first one is I am more rested. And there was a point where I was so stressed out and so overwhelmed with so much that was on my plate that I would go to bed like stressed out that tomorrow morning, oh my God, I have to do five more things. To the extent that even when I was sleeping, the time I'm supposed to be rested, I used to have dreams, like literally dreams like, what I'm going to do tomorrow morning. So I have to do three lunch boxes for my kid and what I'm going to cook, this is what I'm going to do. And then I have to make sure my alarm doesn't go off. I don't miss my alarm and things like that. So even in my rest period, I wasn't rested. So it's not that I'm sleeping at 9 p.m. right now to wake up at six, but I'll come to it in a later point what exactly I'm doing. But the fact that I am much more rested, I think emotionally, intellectually, and physically, it definitely is helping me to sustain the fact that I'm getting up at 6 a.m. That's one. But is I think I'm much more energetic. I'm looking forward to the things that I have to do next day instead of being in a panic mode that, oh my God, can I finish? Now, number three is very, very interesting. Um, I will share the link in the description box below. And even if you don't have any takeaways from this video or any of the other links that I share, this is the link, the only link that you should look and I'll tell you why. So it just happened that one morning I woke up and I was like rested and completely refreshed, which rarely happened to me over like almost like six months to a year or maybe even before that. I used to wake up very groggy and very tired and exhausted and depleted out of my entire energy, energy zone. And I used to always be in the panicky mode that, oh my God, again, it's like, a long rush through of things that I have to do. That day I woke up so refreshed. So I sat up and thought like, why exactly am I so refreshed today? And it was 6 a.m. So it's not like I woke up at 10 a.m. in the morning. So obviously I thought like, when did I go to bed last night? Surprise of all surprises, I went to bed at 12 at midnight. While I was thinking about that the entire day, like, why am I so refreshed? What did I do differently? Because I definitely want to hold on to that secret and repeat it every single day. I happened to stumble across this website, which while I was watching a Thomas Frank video in YouTube. And we all know that we have sleep cycles. Sleep cycles are usually one and a half hours for everybody. So the secret is if you allow yourself or your body to complete the sleep cycle and then wake up, 
you will wake up much more refreshed. If you're waking up in the middle of your sleep cycle, which means it's like you're hit by a thousand pound brick on your head because you just forced yourself to wake up because your alarm went off. And then this side, what it does is, it's like amazing. You just have to go and put the time when you want to wake up. So for me, if I put 6 a.m., it gives me a list of time at night when I should go to bed. And 12 o'clock midnight, which is what I went to bed at, is one of those. Once I figured out that uh, 12 to 6 was the right time for me to sleep and my sleep cycle was getting completed, I started doing it every day. So every day now I go to bed at 12 and I wake up at 6 and I don't feel tired at all. Now, of course, once I go back to the real life and when I'm commuting and going through the rush, I'll have to see if that still works. But so far, it has been working like a charm. Number two, no coffee. So um, I have been a coffee drinker for around 20 years, could be less, could be more. I think I'm used to the taste of coffee to give me the jolt to wake up. I drink black coffee, um, sometimes with a little bit of stevia, sometimes not. So it's just plain old boring Nescafe that I, I use the microwave version. So heat up the water, add one or two scoops, stir it up, drink it, that's all. And uh, initially it was just like a lovely thing to do, to sit with a book to read, a novel, and then have a cup of coffee on a rainy day. But since I liked it so much, I think I picked up the habit pretty well. And um, nowadays I don't drink a lot of coffee, but I, my first cup is usually coffee and I might have tea for the rest of the day. Or sometimes if I'm feeling that slump after lunch, I'll have another cup of latte or something from the office vending machine. But that's about it. Um, but I have always had my morning cup of coffee. The way I got off coffee, and I don't know if you want to do the similar thing or not, but it was just that I was waking up at 6 a.m. and around 7, I would have the itch to go have something. And because my parents are here and they drink tea in the morning, I thought I'll just make tea for everybody. And that would be nice because they'll wake up to a lovely cup of tea. And since I was making it for them, I just added my cup of water and I love Darjeeling tea generally. So I really like the flavor, like like the aroma of it, and I started drinking it. And once I started drinking it, I mean, initially I probably thought that I'll have the cup of tea and then, you know, around 8, 8 30 I'll have my cup of coffee or something. But I never had it. And two days later, I realized, oh my God, I, I am not having coffee anymore. Um, I, I don't know how it happened, but definitely by luck, so I don't drink coffee anymore at all, at all in the morning. Sometimes, because I'm working from home now and during lunch or after lunch, um, I'll probably around 2.33, I some days, um, not every day, have a cup of um, iced coffee. Number three is exercise. Now, every time I say it here, I basically jinx myself because after that I stop working out. Because I had the time, I think I was very, very, it was a very exciting thing for me because I never have time. And I thought like I should set up a routine where I should go and exercise same time every day and it was very easy to stack up the habit or the routine right here because I was at home so um, and everybody in my home right now is waking up an hour late I'm the only one who is waking up an hour early than my normal routine so um, I have a very specific morning routine now which is like amazing and maybe I'll share it sometime um, but for now it's making me feel very productive very efficient and I'm getting tons done which I never got done before so um, the reason I I think um, I stacked up my habit because I didn't want to put myself in the position where there is this pitfall that whether I will exercise or not exercise so I didn't want to want to put myself there and I, um, I I know that what I'll do in between so my workout routine is right after I have done the breakfast for everyone I will go do the workout for some days 20 minutes, some day 30 minutes, but it will be there. It's, it's touch wood, it's still there. Um, and uh, soon after I finish my workout, I will come to the bedroom and I will make the beds and everything because everybody's up by then. And then give myself a little more time to clean up maybe a corner and then go take shower and log into work. Other thing I that I do is, um, I have started keeping a checklist. It's more like a to-do thing. So I just have the dates like March 25th, 12th, and I 
check the box every time I work out. So I have two versions, the one, the bullet journal that I initially started, and now I have moved to Notion and I have another one in Notion. So right now I do both. Feels great, one workout, two checklists to mark. Um, kind of nice, I, I at least enjoy doing it for now. There is evidence, there is evidence that if you exercise, your energy level actually goes up. So here it is. Just looking at my laptop so I don't get the numbers wrong. So I'm gonna read right here, okay? So um, Bristol University conducted a study on 200 employees at three organizations which they published in the International Journal of Workplace Health Management where the employees evaluated themselves on a day with exercise and a day without exercise and the results turns out were incredible because on workout days hear this participant scores were 21 yes 21 percent higher for concentration on work 22 percent higher for finishing their work on time 25% higher for working without unscheduled breaks and then incredible 41% for feeling motivated to work. Who knew? Yep, it works amazingly well. So during this time, if you really feel bored working alone, if you are yeah, used to like, you know, ch chatting with your friends at work, your colleagues or occasional tea breaks or coffee breaks or lunch breaks that you take, and maybe you just stay alone in your home and you don't have a lot of people to talk to, I think go exercise. Number four, another important milestone for me is no snacking. I don't snack anymore. It obviously has to be because of the fact that we can't go out anymore, nor can we get food delivered a lot. I mean, there is no delivery right now at my home. Uh, no Swiggy, no Zomato, we don't do anything. I don't even know if they are still um, yeah like delivering food or not the fact is that no one is going out so we don't have a lot of snack items at home which usually we will have even if i don't go and buy it someone else will and it will be there which means when i'm a little bored and instead of you know looking at my yoga mat i like to look at the bag of chips which is wonderful and tasty and yummy and i think it lifts me up but it doesn't and after a while you'll have that crash and you'll be like wow that was a lot but we never think about food in that way because we think can't be the chips it's just that i'm having a long day or a complicated day or even a bad day but tell you what in the journal of nutrition journal of nutrition published in 2010 it mentions how meal and snack patterns for everyone including the frequency of daily eating occasions are suspected to have health outcomes which includes cardiovascular diseases and glucose intolerance and i read somewhere that when people start snacking though they, they just don't stop at one snack there is another very interesting study i'll see if i can put the link i definitely will put the link in the description box and it says youtube actually influences snacking and i was like what it's true most of the time when we reach out for the snack cupboard and bring back the snacks and sit on the couch and have the snacks is when you're watching something online a youtube video happens to me all the time when i see these cooking videos because you're like salivating over the wonderful food you're cooking and they're like i am hungry and then i know i'll go get something to eat last point and we are done um, is better time management I don't even know what to say that's why I'm just thinking for a second here now for most of us you know for most of us who are working moms time management is our skill set that's what we live on that's what we sleep on that's what we do all the time because we're continuously multitasking keeping list doing one thing then moving to another that's what we do now, if someone comes and tells you you're bad at time management, I'll be like, you got to be kidding me. I don't even think it's true till I had this major shift. So I think it's a major awakening when you figure out a better time management system. For me, it has wonderfully worked during this period of time because I already told you I've been trying to look at my entire system and see what I can do better and reset so I always don't feel like I don't have time because there was a point I was sick and tired of myself that 
how is that I never have time to get my own things done and um, I think it has been amazing because I've been using Notion a lot and what I have done is I have a list of checklists. Now checklist is a wonderfully powerful tool if you've never used it and um, I definitely will make another video on uh, productivity and talk about time management where checklist will be the main hero of the show. So that's all for today. Stay safe, stay at home, work from home, do not go out unless you need to and I wish you lots of good vibes and um, that's it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.